Before welcome uh, to in, in stage Luxembourg's Minister of the Communications and Media, Luc Frieden, I will give you a short overview about his accomplishments and present activities. Minister Luc Frieden holds a degree in law from the Sorbonne University and holds a Master of Compar Comparative Law and Legal Philosophy from University of Cambridge as well a Master of Law of Harvard Law School. <clears throat> His thesis on media new gathering by satellites has been published in Stanford Journal of International Law. Luc Frieden was Minister of Justice and Minister for Treasury and Budget from 1999 to 2000. 2009 and has been Minister for Finance since 2009. This year, Luc Frieden has been appointed Minister for Communications and Media and, in, and is as su uh, such in charge of developing the ICT se sector in Luxembourg with his team. Please join me to warmly welcome Minister Luc Frieden on stage. Mr. President, um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Luxembourg. I'm indeed very pleased that um, so many of you come to discover this place, which indeed has uh, bathrooms, shops, um, an important financial services sector, and more and more has becoming a hub for ICT activities. And I was wondering whether your speech just now would not surface, because indeed we could hire you as a, a spokesperson for Luxembourg, because I think it's always good if people whose job it is not to sell the country as it is for us ministers speak about our country. But indeed we have tried hard to make sure that Luxembourg would develop as um, a center for ICT with all the various aspects that are related to that. That is a political ambition that um, we have started a few years ago and um, I want to pay tribute here also to one of my predecessors who is here in uh, the room, my friend Jean-Louis Schiltz, who uh, used to be Minister of Communication, is now uh, again working as a lawyer in, in Luxembourg, who has been instrumental in setting this up. This has been continued uh, by his uh, successors, including myself, and I think indeed this is a constant policy of the Luxembourg government to make out of Luxembourg an international center for financial services, and an international center for ICT, and both, in fact, uh, go uh, hand in hand in many uh, regards. It's also a good place to speak about uh, clouds. I saw many this morning driving to the office, but I think you are talking about different clouds uh, today. The other clouds might disappear. These ones um, are clouds which um, become more important because they are indicating a way towards which we should go, provided we can settle all the aspects that go with it. Um, a few years ago, when I discovered this word for the first time, it was a rather, a rather foggy uh, concept. Uh, many people were enthusiastic about it, but also many que people raised uh, questions about it. And um, I am personally torn very often between the questions and uh, the enthusiasm. But uh, when there are questions, it is for the private sector and politicians together to find solutions to make sure that the questions find appropriate answers. The questions, the concern that were raised were of uh, various aspects. There were uh, regulatory concerns. There were geographical uh, concerns. Yes, it also raised emotional uh, concerns. And if you bring all these concerns together, the concerns were mainly about uh, trust. The advantages of um, cloud solutions are clear, certainly to you, not always to the people outside of this room. It is about entrusting, outsourcing your data or services to someone whose job it is uh, to take care of it, to optimize it, to protect it, and who is probably better at it than you are. So it is also about efficiency, 
it is about a better price, and I think that matters to companies. It is, um, it, prov it certainly produces economies of scale, and therefore it is something that many companies are looking at. And yet, despite all these economic advantages, it seems that the move towards entrusting your data to somebody else, to a third party, is not easy for emotional and other reasons. Data, for all of us, is a precious good. And so if you give a precious good to somebody else, of course, uh, you are somewhat concerned or you raise questions. That is true for the family pictures, pictures of your kids that you want to have uh, in uh, always with you and you don't want to entrust it to somebody else. But it is even more so when uh, we talk about companies where a customer's data or other uh, business relevant data and trust it to somebody else. As uh, was indicated beforehand, uh, I'm not only Minister of Communications, but um, I've been for a longer time Minister of Finance. And cloud computing uh, indeed plays a role in the financial services sector, and therefore I would like to draw on that example uh, to, tell you, to show to you how I think these issues of concern and trust all come uh, together. The Luxembourg Financial Services Regulator, uh, the supervisory authority, uh, which is called in Luxembourg the Commission de Surveillance du Secteur Financier, has adopted an open position towards cloud computing. Already at a very early stage, and it issued guidelines for financial institutions who would want to adopt cloud computing uh, solutions. Despite this comfort by the regulatory authority, it seems like financial institutions still sometimes had an intrinsic and emotional reluctance to entrust to a third party with the personal and financial data of their customers. They often prefer, for the reason explained beforehand, holding on to their data and invest heavily in their own servers, in their banks, in their own IT teams, in their own telecom and electricity supplies, and so on. It seems like we tend to have an instinct feeling that having our data in our own basement is like sitting on it, hence the best way to protect it. The same goes for music in the cloud, or streaming music instead of owning a CD. It is reassuring. It feels you can hold on to it. Almost touches, as if you owned it more. And I think this emotion aspect should not be forgotten in the whole discussion that you are having here and that we have to have as regulators. There are clearly objective arguments for cloud computing, but we have to deal more with the issue of trust. And that is what brought us in Luxembourg, where we have an heritage and a reputation based on security, stability and trust in many economic, political and social aspects that we have to build on this aspect of trust. How can we do that? Trust has many faces. First of all, we developed together with the private sector, and that is an important aspect for us always, private and public have to work together. We developed the necessary infrastructure in order to make it possible for the data to move as fast as secure as possible from one place to another. We invested heavily in international connectivity. Luxembourg is connected to the major internet exchange points in Europe. Brussels, Paris, London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, and within milliseconds reach as if you were in all of these places at the same time. Cloud solutions could be offered to and accessed from all of Europe from here. And then our data centers, you referred to that a few minutes ago. They are brand new. Constructions of the last, of the latest one of Lux Connect only started a few days ago. Six of them are or will be tier four certified, i.e. of uh, highest security uh, ranking. I'm not an engineer, so I will not tell you this morning anything about uh, megawatts, bytes, redundancy, cooling power, electricity rates, or well, that becomes already a little bit more economic. 
all of these norms, you know them better, and I understand that there is even a possibility during these days uh, to visit um, our uh, latest uh, data centers. So ask those questions to engineers. But as a lawyer, as somebody who has to deal with this regulation, it seems understandable to me that a 24-7 focus on security and reliability in what one could almost call data temples, and I must say I was quite impressed when I saw them first uh, uh, a few months ago, that is a profession of its own. So your data is physically safer in the hands of those whose daily business it is to protect it than if you try to do it as a side job and host your data in your basement while you are busy running your core business, be it financial services or something else. So therefore, we believe that international connectivity data centers are important in this, in this objective to build uh, trust. But there's a third element that for us uh, is important. We adopted a strategy to develop high-speed internet connectivity at national level. We aim to bring fiber to most of the homes in Luxembourg uh, in the coming years, at the latest by 2018. This is indeed an ambitious plan. It is also an expensive one, if I may add, as a Minister of Finance. But we have the firm belief that this is an investment into the future of Luxembourg. It is not only about allowing the end consumer to have access to new consumer services. With the proper fiber connection and the availability of cloud solutions that you provide, it allows people to create a business from their homes. They will have, in fact, the tools at homes to have a sophisticated technology from anywhere and offer services to anybody. We believe that this will empower citizens and businesses, that it will boost entrepreneurship, and we need entrepreneurship and innovation, and hence it will benefit the entire economy. And finally, with all this goes another aspect which I consider to be very important. As a citizen, as a minister, and I would also say as a former minister of justice, and that is cybersecurity. That's why I believe it's extremely important that next to connectivity, data centers, in, in high-speed internet connectivity in the country, that we need a national strategy for cyber security. We, have, we are focusing on three main objectives in this context. One is to protect the country's critical communication infrastructure against the major cyber attacks. The second one is to provide national supports against cyber threats to local businesses. And third, I think that's also quite important, to raise awareness, both with business and with citizens, of cybersecurity and uh, teach them, accompany them, uh, tell them how they should protect uh, their data. Then there is trust inspired by the regulatory environment. You have the infrastructure and you have the regulatory environment. Legislation is uh, sometimes uh, lagging behind technological evolution. And that's quite normal, because it is the role of legislators to accompany technological uh, development. So there must be first technological development, and then you have uh, the right laws, the right framework that makes this technological evolution a safe one, one which can be used by businesses in a stable environment. For this uh, rules of law that we have to develop, we want to make them in a way that they are technologically neutral enough to be future-proof to these evolutions. And we want to address proactively such technological changes of paradigm. Luxembourg, I'll give you a few examples on how we do that. Luxembourg is the first country in Europe that has adopted a legislation that has adopted recently a legislation with regards to bankruptcy of a cloud provider or data hoster. Imagine you store your industrial secrets, the data of all your clients, or as I said, your family pictures in the cloud, and the provider goes bankrupt. How could you recover your data without it being lost in the bankruptcy procedure? The Luxembourg law 
now protects you. We wanted to make sure that the liquidator was not going to simply switch off the power and sell the servers by the kilo to recoup some value for its creditors, as is the normal task of a liquidator. The new legislation specifies that if you entrust your data to the company that went bankrupt, you have a legal claim to retrieve your data. And the liquidator has to make sure that you have time to recollect it. That is quite extraordinary. Having been a liquidator in my former life, I know that this is not the normal way you do liquidation. So this is a specific legislation aimed at making sure that bankruptcy takes into account the new world of um, cloud uh, uh, solutions. Cloud computing also raises questions with regard to taxation. How can we make sure that there's no fiscal disadvantage at outsourcing some services rather than keeping them in-house? I cannot give you yet the answer today. But being also Minister of Finance, I think we have to find solutions that this will be tax neutral in the future, and I'm sure that such solutions can uh, be found. Another challenge uh, for the legislator with regard to cloud computing is data uh, protection. As you know, we are currently discussing at uh, European level a new data protection uh, regulation. This is a very difficult discussion because it brings together so many different uh, aspects. Uh, we have to discuss about questions who should be in charge of making sure that the citizens' data is safe when one hardly knows anymore where they are uh, located. Or when it can be located in many different countries at once. So we have to deal with these uh, questions, but I think it is important that uh, Europe leads the way with regard to safeguarding people's right to privacy and the protection of their data from commercial applications. And indeed, the emotions raised in the last few months um, have shown that this is a serious issue that we as policymakers have to take seriously into account. We in Luxembourg believe that to ensure efficient protection, the rules have to be clear, pragmatic, understandable, future-proof, that means also technologically neutral, and not too cumbersome for the companies. So we have to strike the right balance here. If these rules are too cumbersome for companies, they may not comply with them. Worse, they may even decide to leave the European Union to avoid the burden of compliance. Europe would hence run the risk of too much protection killing protection. So this balance has to be found. I think it's not easy. We should not let ourselves pushed into a certain direction on the basis of recent <coughs> events, but we have to take into account recent events. We have to find the right balance between the right to privacy and the pragmatic way for companies to deal with all of these issues. If I bring all these aspects together, again, you see that what I started with was trust and it is this trust that we have to build together. Building it together means having a clear strategy. And Luxembourg government um, has this strategy for making out of this country an ICT sector. But it's not enough to do that with words. That's why we build the infrastructure. That's why we adopt the legislation. That's why we will work on the European scale to have open borders. But the place in Europe from which you can use uh, these cloud solutions to make your businesses more efficient. And we very much count on your support to make sure that uh, we can find the right ideas to develop the digital economy. This is about innovation. This is about economic development. This is about uh, growth. And I hope that the discussion that you will be having here in Luxembourg will help us to grow the European economy, will help us to grow cloud computing solutions which are in the best interest uh, of all of us as citizens, as companies and as governments. The Luxembourg government will continue to support EuroCloud and is uh, proud to welcome you once again here in Luxembourg uh, in the future, but mainly we want to learn from the proceedings that you will have here in Luxembourg, which I wish you uh, uh, to be very successful ones. Thank you.